But I'm gonna leave this in the video because this is exactly why I built this deck because decks like this are just, this is ridiculous. They're just playing solitaire with themselves and they did it with four mana. Where's the fairness anymore? I'll fast forward through the rest of this for you guys. Oh, wait a second. Oh, they have... Wait. If we choose not to sacrifice the cards, do they lose? <laughs> they killed themselves with our Rakdos! Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Rakdos still won us the game. <laughs> Man, I miss the old days of magic where you could just slap a whole bunch of powerful, efficient creatures into a deck and it would just work. Nowadays, it feels like mid-range decks that play fair games of magic just don't exist anymore. Well, today I'm here to find out if we can make one work in today's metagame. Let's take a look at the list. Today we are playing good old Jund. Just a fair mid-range deck. Plain and simple. It kind of reminds me back in the day when Saffron Olive from MTG Goldfish would uh, find what he would call trade binder decks and play them uh, to see how good they were. So I kind of built this with that inspiration in mind, you know, just the, hey man, I got a couple of this, a little bit of that. These are all really good cards. I'm just going to stuff them all in a deck and see if it works. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this list up here for you to look at for a few minutes and we'll go over the card choices and stats and everything at the end. Uh, if you stick out through the video and you decide you want to craft the deck please wait around until the end so i can go over the stats with you uh it's very important to me uh for me to show transparency and i always go over my win percentages and uh and everything so that you guys can get an honest take of the deck with that let's get into some games and see how much fun we can have playing fair games of magic we found somebody danger duck all right danger duck Time for us to put you in some danger. I get to go first, and this hand is awful. Ugh, this is better, but not by a lot. Uh, I think we keep Gex's command and put a push pull back. Hello, they said hi. Give him the give him the private eye there. Uh, of course, it's mono red. No, oh, red green. Basically, mono red. Spelled on Ronum Excavator. Well, let's kill Feldon. Mountain for the opponent. Picnic Runer. Well, let's get Glissa down. This way they have to um, burn, yeah, obliterating bolt. So maybe maybe they don't have a way to pump picnic runer now. Charming scoundrel. They can put a wicked token on the runer. If we ever get to the Gix's command, though, a virtue of persistence is a good way to deal with picnic runer. I don't like the life total we're at, but they are low on cards. We can play this crazy or trespasser to start gaining some life. I'm gonna put this down to eight. Play the land. Play trespasser. Eat the picnic runer. Gain a life, and then we can cycle this carnosaur if we don't draw a land to kill the swift spear. Uh, I'm gonna block the scoundrel because if they monstrous rage the scoundrel, at least it still dies. The ancestor's aid gives it first strike. That's a pain. So we take two, go down to seven. 
I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna attempt to kill the Swiss Spear here. Taking one anyway, but better than them continuing to be able to do bad things. Uh, so let's just play the Dread Knight. One more land. One more land. We can play this Gixus command. Ruby Daring Tracker. Opponent does not attack. We find, we find the land, but not how we want it. So here's hoping they didn't draw a way to kill us. Monstrous Rage is just game over. Audacity. It doesn't quite do it. I'm definitely blocked. Hopefully they draw like a creature that's small that we can kill with the Skixis command. Yep, Charming Scoundrel, that's good. Although they're probably gonna do a Wicked token this time, which means we're gonna lose. Oh, they discard draw. I'll play another creature. More creatures. Land. Ooh, cruelty though. Cruelty's better here, I think. Get back, Carnosaur. Hopefully we spin into something good. Alana Elena's pretty good. All right, we gotta hold back though. We can't afford to attack. But now Gix's command, we can gain a bunch of life. Good game. All right, <laughs> I thought they meant like they just have two lightning strikes in hand, but no. Ooh, Swayze. What up, homeboy? Content Creator Showdown. That's a pretty good hand for it. Let's see what Swayze's messing around with today. He's always got some interesting stuff. I like, I like his stuff. Razor Verge Thicket. Well, let's go ahead and get an underdog down. Got go for the throats for days. Elf. Gala Greeters. Uh, we'll keep Dread Knight on top. Let's go ahead and kill that. Whatever they're doing with it, I don't want to know. These colors make me think he's playing. This might be like a Vogelist wedding announcement. Maybe it's just tokens. Uh, so let's get a shoulder down. Get in for three. Probably got an answer to shoulder, I imagine. Another secluded courtyard on Elf. Bliss of Sun Slayer. We've got an answer for that. Ooh, Gix's command. Well, we're gonna kill Glissa. Draw a card with the Dread Knight. Get in. Down to 10. Queen Alenel of Rudok and a Virtue of Loyalty. Nice. Very nice. These are all 2-2, two -two, so we can kill those and make them sacrifice the token. So let's play Commercial District because we're not going to spend the mana. Uh, we can leave Dread Knight on top, so let's destroy each creature with power 2 or greater and... What do we got in the yard? No creatures. Well, we don't have to make him sacrifice anything. We can just put counters on underdog. 
because he has the double block. So that's fine. Bonus down to five. Another Glissa. That's a pain. Let's draw. See if we can find some removal. Unfortunately not. Let's go ahead and get these red knights down. I mean, at this point, if he wants to play the virtue of loyalty, though, we'll just kill him on the uh, on the crackback with the restless cottage. But just really depends. He's got some token generators in hand, then that would be a problem for us. But. We got Gallic Readers and Vanifar. Nothing to cloak, though. Does he attack with Bliss? I doubt it. He did gain two life, though. Push pull. Two creatures from a single graveyard. What does he have? How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just have shielded in our graveyard. So if we get back Queen, she would be a four, four and Glissa. Let's do it. Let's get back Glissa and Queen for 5-5 five, five. and get in like this. We're at 29, so I'm feeling comfortable and he, and he has the block. He has to block the larger creatures. I mean, his Glissa can kill whatever he wants, but... He does have to block the Glissa. All right, and he's down to one. We keep both of our Dread Knights. And that'll do it. We did it. Right, fire truck, fire truck, fire truck. We get to go first. This is all right. We will keep uh, copper line gorge first. Epicure for the opponent. Takanuma and an underdog. Depending on what our opponent is playing, will depend on whether we play Forge or not. Xander's Lounge. Feels like a deck I want to be playing Forge against. So I'm going to do it. Get in for four. is going to block our underdog. Of course, Joking goes bye-bye. Haunted Ridge for the opponent. And Corpse Appraiser. I haven't seen that one in a while. Good old Corpse Appraiser. Exiles that creature from his graveyard. Picks a card. Mills two lands. We'll play Death Cap Blade and a Glissa. Get in there for five. The opponent wants to block underdog. We're cool with that.
Kix's command should be quite useful. Eventually. Keep Cavern Bat. Well, that's annoying. And steal our Gix's command. Alright, uh, Land of War Waste. Let's go ahead and get a Dracosaur down. Get in 4 6. We will draw in the forest. See what our opponent has. We can't deal with this forge. It's definitely gonna take over the game after a few more turns. Gix's command. So they're gonna put some counters on their bat and that's fine. Um, we're gonna get in there with our dog. Draw card. Perfect. We drew another push, so we can still we can push the bat. And then pull next turn if they remove our board. And we have a forge token coming in for five next turn, so feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Can't see a way the opponent gets out of this, to be honest. Bitter Triumph, they discard Cavernous Souls to kill Glissa. Keep Cavern Bats. Only can take something, but the Forge Token still kills them. Yep. GG's. All right, I want a good, fair, clean game of magic against Jimmy B. We get to go first. That's always fantastic. This looks good. We'll keep. Need some red mana for this Dracosaur eventually, but we'll get there. If you're wondering why my uh, camera is in the bottom left corner today, it's because I just could not help but show off Tiny Bones. This adorable. He's got to be the best pet that they've made in forever. He's got to be the rudeness, tootness, cutest cowboy skeleton you ever did see. Ooh, mountain mono red. Can we race mono red? I have to admit, lately, I have been quite tired of getting smacked around by Mono Red. That's what I get for playing Jank all the time, though. Mountain? It's probably no profitable block here. Convenient target. It's suspected now, so it can't... It's got Menace. And he has a play with fire. What a joy. Aha, we found a red source though. Get out of here, monastery swift spear. Chandra dressed to kill. Gonna ping us in the face, probably play another Swift Spear, Kamano, or something ridiculous. Oh, Mono Red. Even when they're playing weird stuff, they're still somehow the same. We'll play Land of War Waste. Let's get a preacher of the Schism down so we can start making some lifelink tokens. Hopefully, we'll find another red source for this Drake store sooner rather than later. If not, we can also start uh, attacking with the cottage to make food. Godric Cloak Reveler. Does he have something to go with it? Nope. Not unless he's got a mountain in his hand. 
Sweet. What a draw. Get rid of Godric. Play a Galissa. Unfortunately, I'm going to take some pain for her. Uh, no, we're going to go face. Um, this is minus seven. I can start going after Chandra next turn where I can attack him with Blissa and remove the counters from Chandra instead of having to waste the resources going after Chandra herself. I can also technically get the underdog back from the graveyard. Lightning Strike is unfortunate. And depending on what he does here, we may actually take the risk and do the underdog to uh, the mountain. Phoenix chick. Yeah, we gotta get this Chandra off the board, though. There's the other red source, so after this turn, uh, we don't need more red sources. Um, actually, no. Let's, let's power up the cottage and do it that way. It's less life, and it gives us a food token. We will exile the... He's got five mana, so lightning strike. So if he draws the vampire, he can't get that back. Now we've got a food to sacrifice, so we can kind of gain some more life back. Monastery is supposed to be for the opponent. You can get the convenient target back. Pump up the swift spear. That's okay. He's out of cards now. Hold it on to nine. Gix's command. That's pretty good. Uh, destroy each creature power two or less. Life link. Auto pay. We'll take the one. Put it on the creature. Get in there. Make another one. Gain four life. Another Chandra. I'm feeling good now, though. We're stabilized. I don't think they can hurt us anymore. They can't hurt us anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and get this Dracosaur down. Kill the Chandra. Attack the face. Come on, Chandra. I know you can do better. Just give up already. Ah, right, there we go. <laughs> it's party time. Dreaded junglist. Am I, 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 I don't know what a junglist is, but I'm pretty sure I dread it just because it sounds scary. We get to go first. <sighs> this is real slow. Like we've got removal, but I mean, we've got a handful of five and six drops. That's not very good. Oh goodness. This is much better, but unfortunately. So here's what I'm thinking. I think we've put Trespasser. And Dret. I'm going to put a land back. And hope that there's one on top. Go for the throat. That's reasonable at least. And we can draw with Red Knight. Swamp for the opponent. Evolved Sleeper. That's something that dies to virtue. So we'll go ahead and kill that. Hopefully we find a land and we can get the Cerebrass Forge down and ride that to victory. Another Evolve Sleeper. Not a land. All right, let's draw. Come on, land. Any land. That's not a land either. And something that kills Sleeper, though. Another Swamp for the opponent and a Gix. Boy, do we need a land. They draw a card, lose life. Hooray, we found one. But now we have to kill Gix, so let's do that. <laughs> we mill a land. If we draw another land, we can kill this sleeper and play a Dread Knight. Hopefully the opponent does not drop a shoulder to on us here. Another Gix. 
Yeah, now we gotta go for the throw of that instead. We're down to 17. Opponent draws, loses the life. That is not a land. Well, we have to kill Gex. We can't keep letting him draw cards. Please don't mill another land. Okay, that's fine. I did not want to draw that next turn. I want to draw land. We can do it. I believe in us. Death Swamp for the opponent. Opponent is going to start pumping up their sleeper. Meet some land, please. Well, it is a land. That's another one. It's tapped, but it's another one. Well, we can block with this. Means we're going to mill the land, though. But, I mean, I kind of want an untapped land. I know it's a little greedy, but... We also need another black. Opponent plays Liliana. I'm going to make us sacrifice our creature. Or they just cut down instead. Alright. GG's. Jibby XD. All right. Opponent is going first. Slow, a little bit of slow mana, but this is all right. We've got some surveil. More mono red. I'm not making this up. This is three in a row. Goodness gracious. Mosma Dread Knight. Uh, I think I'd rather have land. I would rather find an untapped land. Monastery Swift Spear gets the Kamado uh, counter. Monstrous Rage, just smack it in the face for six. Goes down to 13. Yep. Flips the Kamado. Charming Scoundrel. Treasure smacks us for six, puts us down to seven. Uh, the question is Do we risk playing Glissa and just getting lightning struck out of the game? Or do we push full etching? Lightning strike still pretty much still pretty much kills us at that point. This is the highest chance for us to come back. Cause if we just kill the monetary supposed to be your lightning strike plus like anything else still kills us. And then we have no board state. At least this way we can block the Swiss spear with the Glissa and have the Glissa left over. If we draw land, we can Tranquil Furl back and gain some life back. Opponent's going to Witch Doctor Frenzy us. GG. All right, and we're back for the post game wrap. Well, I tried. I really did. Um, I went through quite a diff few different variations of the deck, just trying to make. The goal was to make a fair deck you know no crazy combos no breach the multiverse you know like yeah there's a couple trumpeting carnosaurs in the deck but you know there's nothing crazy going on in the deck it's just powerful efficient good creatures a little bit of removal a little bit of recursion um and i mean the deck's not terrible at all like i mean it's it's 51 percent is just not super impressive uh so it could just be my card choices. It could be my my stick of purposely not putting better cards in because I wanted to play something that felt more like Magic used to feel uh, when there was just a lot more mid range and fair decks. Back when things like Huntmaster of the Fells were just busted cards and 
uh you know primeval titan was like amazing and you know you could just play five and six mana bombs that you know took over the game uh it just doesn't feel that way anymore um but i tell you what this is one of the first decks that i've worked on knowing that it might not necessarily be the best deck that i was going to play but i had so much fun and the games that i won i had more fun even though i wasn't winning as much playing this than i have in a while just because this felt very nostalgic to me uh this felt very close to how good magic used to be uh so i mean tell me your ideas tell me tell me how would you approach building a fair mid-range deck if you got some list ideas i'd love to hear them in the comments i'd love to hear your ideas uh i know this list is absolutely not optimized uh, I just wanted to play cards that I wanted to play. I wanted to play fun stuff. I wanted to play neat little, you know, interactions like blood splatter analysis, making Gix's uh, command, giving me things to get back with Gix's command if I didn't have other modes I needed, or giving me stuff to get reanimate with cruelty of Gix or virtue. I love Ra Rakdos is just such a cool card and. Uh, I just wanted I just wanted to have fun and I did. I had a blast even even though I didn't really get very far. Uh so this is what magic's about. Magic's about having fun. And I'm I don't feel like I wasted my time at all playing this deck. I felt like I actually for once did something I wanted to do uh instead of pushing myself to be as competitive as possible and it felt good. So Remember, you don't always have to grind yourself into the dust. Remember to have fun. Remember to play things that you enjoy. And I will see you in the next one.